order as soon as. Uh, this meeting. I want to uh, say good evening to uh, and welcome everyone to the uh, City of Troy Planning Commission meeting on January 12th, 2021. Tonight's meeting is being conducted remotely using the GoToMeeting remote meeting platform due to the COVID-19 pandemic. For those watching tonight's meeting on television or on the city's YouTube channel, we welcome you. Copies of the agenda for tonight's meeting are available on the city's website. The meeting will be conducted in accordance with the agenda as presented or amended by the Planning Commission. Our first item of business after the roll call will be to uh, accept the, the new proposed resolution, uh, temporary suspending and modifying the Planning Commission bylaws and rules of procedure, which will permit us to proceed with this meeting virtually and to afford an opportunity for us to receive public comment. We have made every effort to ensure that the meeting adheres to the requirements of the Open Meetings Act. We have provided opportunities for public comment via telephone and email prior to the meeting and all public comment, if any, will be shared with the Planning Commission. At this time, I'd like uh, Kathy Sarnicki uh, to conduct our roll call. Mr. Faison. Here. Mr. Hudson. Here. Mr. Cran. Here. Mr. Lambert. Here. Ms. Malalahali. Here. Ms. Paracas. Here. Mr. Rahman. Here. Mr. Rausch. Here. Mr. Tagle. Here. Quorum presence. Thank you. Next item is suspension of the Planning Commission uh, mm -hmm. bylaws. Can we have a motion to suspend those bylaws? I'll move. Okay, Mr. Carlton, uh, Carlton uh, Faison moves. Who would like to second? I'll second. John Tagle seconded. Roll call, please. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Ms. Malalahali? Yes. Ms. Paracas? Yes. Mr. Rahman? Yes. Mr. Rausch? Yes. Mr. Tago? Yes. Mr. Faison? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is approval of the minutes from our uh, prior meeting. That was on December 8th. <coughs> 2020. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting? Mr. I Chair, this is this, Ms., this is the recording secretary. Um, agenda item three is approval of the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, I'm glad you caught it. Thank you. Approval of the agenda first before we do that. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda, tonight's agenda? So moved. moved. That would be who, who moved it? There are two of us. Uh, Hudson was one. <laughs> okay. We'll I think Lambert to... was the other. <laughs> okay. We'll give it I'll to Mr. Hudson. Second. How about a second from Mr. Lambert? That's fine with me. So moved. <laughs> okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Krent. Yes. Mr. Lambert. Yes. Ms. Malahali. Yes. Ms. Paracas. Yes. Mr. Rahman. Yes. Mr. Rausch? Yes. Mr. Tagel? Yes. Mr. Faison? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is the approval of the minutes of the December 8th, 2020 meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the, the minutes of our last meeting? I'll move that. John Tagel gets the motion. I'll second. Mr. Faison seconds. Roll call, please. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Ms. Malalahali? Yes. Ms. Paracas? Abstain. Mr. Rahman? Yes. Mr. Rausch? 
Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Mr. Faison? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Motion carries. The next item is public comment for items submitted by email or telephone message. Do we have any public comment? There are no public comments for tonight's meeting. Thank you. So we've gone to the next item, which is special use approval. Long Lake and DeQuinder Shell, file number SP 2020-0001, proposed Long Lake Shell Edition, southwest corner of Long Lake and DeQuinder, section 13, currently zoned NN neighborhood no J district. Who's gonna present tonight? I, I will, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Carlo will present, but Mr. Chairman, I would note that the uh, the owner of the of the uh, parcel, Sam Askar, is in attendance this evening, as Great. is his architect, uh, Arthur Collegian, and they'll be able to uh, participate in this meeting. Great, sounds good. Go ahead, Dan. Thank you, um, and good evening. Um, my name is. Uh, I know there's a couple new members on the on the planning commission. I want to introduce introduce myself and welcome you to the planning commission. My name is Ben Carlisle. Uh, I'm the planning consultant for. Uh, the city so you will see me in attendance at all the meetings um because there are a couple new members and just to, to re-educate ourselves um with regards to, to to process and projects um director Savdant and i felt it would be a good idea for us to quickly go over the difference between a special use and a buy right development the reason that we bring up this tonight is because this application of the shell station is a special use um project So we use the term buy right a lot. You'll hear us uh, use that term a lot. And what it simply means is the use of a property in a manner which is consistent with the use as permissible in the zoning district. So essentially what it's saying is a use is um, a use by right is a use that's permitted in the zoning district and thus it's not subject to any special review or approval by a local government, uh, i.e. the planning commission. Uh, you'll hear us use uh, terms used by right. We'll also use common terms of principal use or permitted use or a primary use. Um, an accessory use to a principal use is also considered used by right. By right. So essentially what a, what a by right use and by right development is, is it's a permitted use in a zoning district that does not need any special approvals from the planning commission. On the other hand, a special use does require approvals from the Planning Commission. Um, and the requirements for a special use are set forth in Article 9. And basically what a special use is, is it recognizes that there are some uses that may be appropriate in certain locations. For example, a drive through use or a, a hotel, uh, it may be appropriate in certain locations and may not be appropriate in certain locations. And what a special use does is it allows the Planning Commission to review those uses on a case-by-case -case basis. And in addition, um, and perhaps more importantly, on a case-by-case -case review, it does allow the Planning Commission to, pr to place reasonable conditions upon that use to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. Um, it is a discretionary approval on the Planning Commission, but it is based upon a review of standards. And these uh, standards include compatibility with adjacent uses, compatibility with the master plan, the potential traffic impact, the impact on public services such as police and fire, utilities, etc compliance with other zoning ordinance or standards and requirements, the impact on the overall environment and special use approval, uh, any specific requirements for the for a special use. Um, you'll note in our reports that we go through these standards in pretty detail um, and with regards to if, they, if, the, if the use or the project meets these or doesn't meet these. I mean, so if you have any questions about how we review these, please feel free to ask. A special use is very unique. Um, it's a unique process, it's a unique element in the ordinance. What makes it unique is it, is, it does require public notice. So the public is notified that there is this use going on. It requires a public hearing. So uh, residents, uh, neighbors, interested parties are allowed to come to the meeting, the planning commission meeting, and uh, present their opinion or facts or findings on the, on the uh, use itself. And again, it does allow the planning commission to place conditions upon approval. Um, a buy right development does not have this, these elements. It does not require public notice. 
It does not require a public uh, hearing and it does not um, uh, allow the planning commission to place conditions upon approval. So uh, Brent and I wanted to go through that very quickly tonight just to highlight the difference between a, a buy right uh, and a special use development. Moving on, tonight uh, the planning commission has asked to consider a special use for the Shell Station, which is located at the southwest corner of Long Lake in DeQuinder. Um, the applicant is proposing to do a uh, facade improvement and a small addition in the location where my cursor is on the screen. The proposed addition is approximately um, 1,600 square feet of ground floor addition and a 760 square feet of second floor addition. The ground floor addition is for the purpose of expanding the existing convenience store and then add uh, an additional um, indoor and park storage area. The second story addition is a private office. Again, as noted and outlined in red, the addition is located on the rear end of the existing building. The application or the, uh, did require three variances. Uh, one was to expand a non-conforming building. Two is to encroach um, a building in addition uh, along the DeQuinder property line. And three is a building addition on the west property line. Uh, the applicant uh, received three variances from the Zoning Board of Appeals on uh, November 17th of 2020. We do note that uh, the Planning Commission has reviewed this project um, uh, in the past. This was done uh, in February of last year. Uh, discussion that mean included the variance request to build to expand the building that's been addressed uh, through the zoning board of appeals uh, the existing dumpster location in the site um, the applicant has relocated the dumpster from the previous site uh, the building addition height um, of the addition the shared parking with adjacent retail parking in the alley area um, operable vehicles or vehicles from repair um, and the parking space calculations uh, another issue raised was a vehicular circulation of blo blocking the visibility, parking requirement, the calculations of the number required, and the occupancy calculations. Um, at that meeting, the Planning Commission held a public hearing. Um, I don't believe there were any uh, public comments, uh, but they postponed the app, uh, action to allow the applicant to be considered for those uh, zoning board appeals uh, variances. We do note that for the most part, the applicant has addressed the concerns raised um, by both staff in the planning commission at the last meeting. However, there are a few outstanding conditions that we want the planning commission uh, to consider with the application. Um, most of our concern is actually located in this alley location on the west side of the property. Um, but first is regard to parking. The site requires uh, 20 spaces based on uh, the use and size of the building in addition. Uh, the applicant is proposing 20 spaces on site. However, we note that three of the spaces are actually within this existing alley. Um, so from a functional standpoint, they may uh, provide the required the parking for employees, but from a zoning ordinance standpoint, we can't count these three spaces here as meeting the ordinance requirements because there's no access unless cars move in, in and out of the way. So essentially the applicant is parked, is under parked um, by three um, uh, spaces in, in uh, by, by review of the ordinance. The second um, discussion point we have is, is related is the applicant um, is showing or discussing uh, vehicle storage in what we're calling the alley between the western property line. Um, section 6.26 of the ordinance requires that any outdoor storage shall be screened um, with a fence up to eight feet in height. Uh, the applicant doesn't indicate any screen in this location. And furthermore, um, it was a little bit unclear from the applicant um, if they're preparing, if they're pr proposing to um, allow for overnight parking or outdoor storage in this alley. Again, um, by parking, by their by their own parking counts, they want to use these three park uh, spaces to count towards their, their parking requirements. But if it's filled with um, inoperable vehicles or vehicles in repair, or storage, um, it, again, wouldn't function for actual funky, uh, parking spaces. Uh, the Planning Commission um, can consider a condition that does uh, preclude uh, overnight storage or parking, um, overnight parking as well. The third um, uh, issue for consideration is uh, automobile oriented uses do require screening um, of it for adjacent properties. Um, and so in this case, it would be along this property line. 
uh, the western property line um, where the applicant is preparing uh, is, is proposing this alley there is no screening on their uh, on their lot there's no wall there's no landscape screening so they would be seeking relief from that requirement to provide screening and that's something the planning commission can grant uh, fourth, we do note the applicant has provided additional landscaping, but the detailed landscape plan uh, and calculations were, were not provided. For example, there are areas highlighted with landscaping, but the size and species were not indicated. Uh, and lastly, the applicant um, has indicated that as part of their building elevation, um, they are not proposing any additional building lighting. Uh, it's assumed because it's a new facade that new building lighting will be provided. However, the applicant should provide fixture details and photometrics of the new lighting. We do note this is a special use. There are those seven conditions which I highlighted earlier. Um, we do support the investment of the site. The site is, um, this is a, a significant improvement on the site, especially with regards to elevations. Um, and we, we, we note that with discussion from the Planning Commission, and if these planning commission, these site plan issues can be addressed to the satisfaction of the Planning Commission, we do find the standards have been met. So again, we do, uh, we do support the investment of the site but there are these five outstanding items that we request the planning commission discuss with the applicant um, and allow the applicant to amend the site plan as noted in our report. Now that, if the planning commission does approve the project, that, those changes to the site plan, whatever they may be, either can come back to the planning commission for formal approval or uh, you can allow staff or the administrative uh, uh, staff to approve it with those conditions as you place on it. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I will stop sharing um, and answer any questions you may have. Very good. Are there any questions for Ben Carlisle? I have a question for Mr. Carlisle. Go ahead, Mr. Faison. Hey, hey, Ben, I was looking through the agenda and I didn't see, is there a, a rendering of what the proposed building will look like? No. I believe there, are there were elevations, I believe, that were submitted. I don't know if they were <laughs> full rendering. I know the architect from the applicant is here. He can speak to that in more detail, but um, it just, I see some very generic ones. So, so I'd I like what, at whatever the appropriate time is, maybe the architect can speak to it. And I thought we saw something more detailed when we looked at this the previous time. But again, I, I didn't see that in this package. Yeah, I, there are there, there, there are. Uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Faison, on there on page twenty nine, there are elevations. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. yeah, that looks like a generic building, though, right? That doesn't necessarily look like this, like a gas station, and it doesn't look like it's in the context of what that corner actually looks like. I believe this is the elevation they're proposing to build, so I would leave that up to the applicant to respond. Okay. To that. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Anyone else? Um, go ahead, Mr. Savinon. I just want to clarify that um, in, in Mr. Carlisle's introduction, he mentioned how special uses require uh, public hearings. And I just wanted to clarify for the record and inform everyone, the Planning Commission did hold a public hearing for this on Feb in February of 2020. There was one person who attended who actually spoke in support of the project and said, had some nice things to say about the, uh, the petitioner, Mr. Askar, but I just wanted to make sure everyone understood we did have a public hearing for this in the past and and also the zoning board of appeals was a public hearing thanks anyone else mr chairman mr yeah, chairman lambert i mr carlisle i believe i may have raised this question at our last hearing on this back in february but to address the parking insufficiency would the applicant be able to arrange with a, an agreement with the adjacent property owner I, I, as of right now i think it's walgreens i don't know what it's going to be in the future but would they be, be able to address their parking insufficiency by an agreement with the adjoining property owner yeah there's there's really um there's a number of ways that this can be addressed mr lambert the, the first option would be the planning commission could simply grant um, the parking deviation that's within your purview is to essentially say that the applicant has proven that they only need X amount of parking, though the ordinance might require Y, um, but we're not going to require them to, to provide what the ordinance requires. Um, the other options, the applicant could find ways to provide more parking. I'm not sure how they would do on this site. It's pretty well um, maxed out as, as much as possible. Um, the applicant could reduce their building size, which would reduce their parking requirement. 
Um, and the fourth option that you raised was the applicant could come up with an agreement with the adjacent property owner to provide additional parking off site. What we would have to do if that would be the case, Mr. Lambert, was one, we want to see the agreement. I, I assume um, the attorney's office would want to see the agreement to, to, to confirm it's binding and, and how long it's binding for. If it's just a year, you know, versus a, a 10 year option, whatever it may be. Um, and then we in the planning department would also want to confirm that that doesn't create a parking problem on the site they're sharing with that there's sufficient parking for that site as well. Um, so it certainly is an option, but it would be something that the applicant would, would it would be additional work the applicant would have to put in um, to make sure that it, it could it could reasonably work. Anyone else? I have a follow-up on the parking. The drawing showed on the interior uh, layout, the floor plan, it showed that there were four spaces for vehicle parking that wouldn't be, it looks like in, that are not in the with the bays where the uh, mechanics work on vehicles. Are those could those be considered parking, or because they're behind those other vehicles, that it can't be considered parking? Yeah, from an ordinance standpoint, Mr. Krent, um, they wouldn't be counted towards ordinance requirements. Now, the planning commission could again, similar to those three that are next to the alley, say in all function they they do serve as parking spaces. But from a strict ordinance um, provision, we we couldn't count those as as parking spaces. Okay, so if we didn't count the ones in that, in quotes, alley, uh, it's not really 17 of the 20 needed, it's really 14 of the 20 needed. No, there is, I, mean, I may have not been clear, they are providing 20 spaces. Three of those 20 are adjacent to the alley, oh. hidden, and so we can't consider those spaces by true definition of the ordinance. So there are, in fact, in our... In, in the interpretation of the ordinance, there are three ordinance, there are three parking spaces short. Okay. In the applicant's functioning of the site, they feel that they have 20 spaces in, in for all practical terms. Okay. All right. Anything else? If not, we'd like to hear from the applicant uh, to help us get a, a better understanding of what you're accomplishing and and uh, and the parking issue and the uh, the overnight parking of vehicles and the possible uh, either uh, screening of the west side of your property. So if you would, uh, is it going to be Sam, are you going to tell us or is it going to be someone from your uh, architect? Uh, I could probably, uh, could you hear me? Um, yes. This is Art Collagen, uh, the architect. Yes. Okay, hi. Uh, there, there was a couple minor clarifications I want to make. Uh, when I resubmitted this after Ben did his review, uh, we ch modified the floor plan. I don't know if you want to bring it up, but we did subtract some square footage of the retail. Technically, based on the ordinance, we only require 19, but we show 20 um, on the plan. Three of those are going to be employee. They're designated on the site plan as employee parking. Uh, the reason why we did that is it's controlled by the owner. Uh, so that um, there isn't any hindrance by the public to maneuver with the other spaces. We felt those three spaces would be only used by employees, not for outside storage. And the storage of vehicles would be inside the building if need be. Uh, so we felt that uh, by rearranging the, the, the parking uh, and reconfiguring the dumpster, you know, where hopefully we meet this, the rules of you know, the two, in other words, there's two shortage instead of three with the way I recalculated and redrew the plans. Um, the other issue of uh, the screening on the uh, west side, there's no there's no land. It, we're, we're butting up right against the property line. And uh, when we went to the ZBA, they felt that there was sufficient screening, even though there, there might be some cars there um, that you may deem as storage or temporary storage as an employee parking. But uh, they felt that a wall there wouldn't serve any practical purposes since there's heavy shrubbery and evergreen trees there. So they uh, did not put that condition on us. It was discussed during that meeting as well. So I, I think the biggest question was the, the allocation of the parking. There was an issue about the dequinder space. We, we changed that on the site plan as a reserve space. So where there was concerns of, uh, Safety, we're leaving that to the owner to maneuver the cars there and the public pretty much, I, th I think, has a free reign with the, the spaces that are open to them. 
so so the so so we're hoping that the way you see it now, it's it's really a controlled condition uh, with the owner. The other thing that I want to add was the waiting room. Uh, the owner brought this to my attention. He could elaborate on it further, but the, in the past, people did not have a waiting area. Now with the waiting room, they will wait uh, probably half hour to an hour, whatever it takes to change the tires or whatever they do. And this, the ability to have less cars on the site will be enhanced because with the waiting room, they will wait there. In the past, they would drive up there, leave their car, uh, and then come back an hour, two or three hours or whatever because of the lack of the waiting space. But with the waiting area now in place, he feels that the, uh, there'll be less car issues uh, based on the fact that there is a nice waiting area there uh, for people to stay for an hour or so, whatever it takes. And uh, so pr pretty much we added some additional landscaping where we could and buffered the area as much as we could. And the trash area is no longer an issue since it has direct access up against the uh, berm and the landscaped area uh, uh, far from the Quinder. And it's, it's, I think it's, it's in a good location now. So um, with that, I'd like to have Sam say anything, if he wants to add anything to what I said. Uh, Sam. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Vod. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, thank you for having this meeting. A um, uh, couple of things uh, I just want to add up to uh, Art. Uh, I want to, uh, just when we did on February, actually, I just want to add uh, one thing to Mr. Brent, what he said about the public meeting. And in that time, I, I, uh, I did supply the, the secretary with, uh, with almost over 100 signatures from the neighborhood uh, approved the uh, uh, the side or what we are doing over there. And I think the secretary has it uh, in that time. Um, uh, I know we, we, I have it with me, but uh, I know she have a copy of it. Uh, uh, the second thing is uh, the storage on the alley. Actually, we don't need that storage anymore. We want to use it as uh, an employee uh, a parking lot. Um, because the storage, we can use the storage overnight inside. But actually, at this situation now, I've been operating this location since 1993. We have a very limited problem uh, with, the, with, with having storage. The main thing now is we're fixing it with, with the waiting area. This is our main concern with this. Because most of the people, when they come in, when they leave their cars, if it's an oil change, because we don't have a waiting area, you know what I mean? They leave their car and when they go home, they will not come back and get it because it, whatever, if they, they don't have a ride or anything like that. So the car will stay overnight and everything else. With this situation, we are fixing this problem 100%. And then mostly, you know, on, on, and even if you take your car in the dealership or you take your car to us or any place, usually we as employee we take your car and we park it so there was be no issue for the customers to park their cars the only people who parking their cars is the people they're getting the gas uh or they getting inside the store as far as the whole uh garage or leaving their cars uh, we the one who controlling this situation is like almost a valet so we know where to park it we know how to take it out we know how to put it in and we never have an issue for customer coming with that you know it was hard for him to take his car in or out. Um, and then as far as the, the screening on the side, um, we went through, we took that garbage dumpster from from that alley uh, when on the first proposal. We put it over there. I think it's going to make more sense. And we, we said, we're going to park our cars over there. And there is a big trees on the adjacent property. We don't see there is a reason for us to put, if we put the wall, you know what I mean, which is I'm not against it. If you guys want me to, I have no problem to do it. But I see the trees that they have on the adjacent property is much nicer. Otherwise, we're just gonna, if the people who's gonna park over there, they're just gonna see a big whole wall and there's no reason for it when we are building a brand new facade around the whole building and especially on that side too. Um, uh, the other thing is is uh, uh, the elevation, as uh, uh, one of the councilmen asked for, we are going to do this elevation exactly as is. 
Uh, I know it'll look completely different. We're going to spend a lot of money to bring it to the standard of 2021. We don't want to say 2020 anymore. 2021 is the best look. So we're going to we're gonna spend a lot of money uh, to bring it to that elevation. And um, and I think we, we dressed most of the stuff uh, that you guys needed. And I hope we can get your approval. Okay, Mr. Savadon, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah qu question for Mr. Askar while he's on the line. Thank you for attending tonight, Mr. Askar. It's nice to see you again. Um, Thank you, sir. Thank question you, sir. For you, you, you are the owner operator, so you will be there every day ensuring that employees will park in designated employee spaces, spaces making sure that parking is managed and making sure that there's not going to be an issue. Is that correct? 100%. I spent 16 hours a day at that location, actually. You're confident that there's that parking is going to work with, with employees parking where designated? You're confident there's not going to be a problem? Yes, sir. 100%. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Oh, I see uh, Ms. Paracas uh, has got her hand up. Um, yeah, this question is for Mr. Askar as well. Um, again, about the parking, um, just to give us an idea, um, there's, let's say, 17 spaces. Um, I, I don't know how many there are currently, but how, how many, what percentage of your parking lot is full at the height of your day? Um, I mean, do you, are there times during the day where it's packed or is it generally not an issue at all? So you're not anticipating an issue? Uh, I mean, it just depends. I mean, I will say if we want to say we're packed, it will be. I uh, I cannot say we have ever been packed. You know what I mean? Is is just a, the the packed the way we uh, is the gas station get packed if there is if there is a people waiting. You know what I mean to to just leave their car and anything like this until we go and move it and park it on the right spot. Otherwise, we never had an issue of people like standing on the line to get into the gas station and trying to wait for somebody to leave and get there and, and, and to wait for somebody to leave so they can park. We did not have this issue at all. Um, and, and I repeated and I said it again a long time ago, the only time we get so packed at maybe this time of the year and not because people are sparking is because again i said it last time is because they take in they lined up for a free air uh, okay. and that's they just lined up in the wrong spot you know what i mean to take the free air uh but we are actually if you look on this proposal maybe it's not showing very well because it wasn't like in the agenda or anything we are relocating that free air to be closest to us because now it's against us as far as the mechanic, you cannot see what's going on over there to go and help the customers because it's exactly facing the Dequinder side. Now we are moving it to be facing the long leg side. It's going to be closer to the dumpster on that, that landscape area. Now we we see this because we, if we're busy, we cannot go help them and they don't come and ask. But we are keeping the free air, where are we going to go ahead and ask them? And that's it's not going to happen because if we do it for them, it's going to be much faster. Okay, thank you. That helps. Now, Mr. Faison. Yeah, Mr. Asgar, uh, two questions. Thank you, ma'am. Um, what kind of repairs do you do at your facility? Yes, sir. Do you do collision repairs, for example? Oh. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. But we do, I mean, as no, we don't do collision. I mean, if somebody hit, uh, I mean, uh, collision of the bumper, just like the our lower of the bumper, if it's you hit, the, uh, we need to just to lift it up and attach it for you. That's, that's the major collision we do. That's it. And we and do also, brakes, we do tires, we do oil mm -hmm. change. Uh, we do, uh, go ahead, sir. No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That was my impression that you did more of the oil change, brakes and tires, things that people could wait for, right, when, when, when they come in. And, and then a question on the parking. You know, you mentioned on the west side that'll be used for employees. 
So I assume then after hours, there'll be no vehicles. You anticipate no vehicles will be in that? Hundred percent. Okay. Hundred percent. Yes, sir. And then the last question, just in terms of the, the building, when you redo it, the orientation is going to remain the same. The front will be, I guess, still that northeast elevation that we see? Correct. Correct, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to add something about that storage. I apologize, sir. Uh, so when we're going to add up that extension for the building, uh, so that's going to save us a lot on the storage. So that definitely that alley, we're going to we're going to ensure there will be no car storage over there because we're going to have now a more room inside the bay to leave the car inside. And that's going to help us by far that the station is going to be easy on the parking. Okay, Mr. Tegel. Yeah, Mr. Asker, a couple of questions. Um, let me start with Ben. Ben, do I remember in your report that of the 17 cars, let's not talk about the three along the west property line, 10 of them are for the pumps and seven of them are for parking people going into the, uh, the convenience store or whatever it might be. Correct. Um, the ordinance requires two spaces per, per pump essentially. If there's five pumps, that's 10 spaces. And then the remainder, remainder would be for the, the uh, retail portion and the repair portion of the business. Okay. So kind of getting back to what Ms. Paracas was asking about, you've got seven spaces for, for clients or visitors coming to your store. I mean, is there any time during the day that you feel that th those seven spaces would be used up uh, and, and someone could not find a place to park? And no, sir, I don't think so. And and my question is, is so if we, as an ordinance, if we say 10 cars for the pumps, Basically, those people who's coming for the pumps, I think they are parking on the pump. Oh, right. Very right. So they're not parking on the park. But yeah. So but if you if you count the parking light outside, we do have the 19, the 19 spaces, basic. Oh, well, the 17, let's call it. Right. So so if I'm going to come and take gas and I fill up my gas, I leave the car over there so I like I'm parking and then go get cigarettes and leave. Right. Well, I just wanted to make make everyone aware that we were talking about seven spaces. So, if we want to calculate it, <clears throat> yeah. Um, okay. The other the other question I had: How many employees do you have at a peak time? Um, well, it will be me, one cashier, and then two mechanics. Okay, so we might have somebody else too. Okay, so that would be four employees. We are four of us. So yes. would one of those employees be parking in one of the seven spaces? Well, we're going to have the two alley spaces, you know what I mean? And then... Well, I, I've, given um, you three, I've given you three spaces along the west property line. Three three employee parking along the west property line. So that leaves a deficit. So in that case, in, in of the seven will be only one. Right. But but again, my my question is, the way that is calculated. I mean, if you look at it, if you want to say it's for the gasoline, in that case, I have actually extra ten cars to park because, the people can park, on the on the pump, and they go do their shopping, and there is another person can come and park on the parking lot and do his shopping. Okay. Thank you. Just, just to be clear, for, for parking for exactly. gas stations, um, we we have the we have required two spaces per pump. Um, the extra spaces are for employees, people who come to not get gas to go to the store for to pick up whatever. So that's why we have additional spaces in addition to simply those that are required at the pump. Go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Savina. Okay. I just I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. I'm looking at sheet SP zero which shows the layout of the site mm -hmm. and along along the south property line there's seven and then directly in front of the store is three that's ten and then in the northwest corner there's four that's 14 and then uh along that 
to, if you go a little bit to the east, there's, there's two. That's 16. And then, and then in front of the uh, that alleyway is one. So I count 17. That's correct. I just want to make sure we're giving we're giving credit for 17 and not just seven. Correct, sir. Correct. I I've got a follow up um, on the parking. That number the, one. The looks like, yeah. That, that number one car, labeled number one on that drawing, looks like it's angled to the point where it's really going to interfere with traffic coming out of that uh, the, the most western bay of the mechanics area. It doesn't look like a clear shot coming out of that bay with a car park there on an angle. I could clarify that. Uh, that's shown as a 20 by 9.5 foot space and the tip of it is in, in line with the uh, edge of the masonry. Uh, the doors are inset about 3 feet in. So uh, I designed it where a car would fit in. If they fit within that allocated space, they would be clear of any traffic coming in and out of the bay there. But if they if they didn't park correctly, that could be an issue. You're right. Yeah. Especially with all the large, very large pickup trucks, those giant pickup trucks, especially the 300 series, uh, they could they could take up a space and a half. So. Um, yeah, that, that would have to be probably for a small car reserved for that because otherwise it's going to interfere with the, I mean, that the, the mechanic working in that bay has got to be really careful about not clipping that corner of that vehicle. Hopefully that spot isn't needed. I had a couple quick questions if there's no others from the group right now. Uh, this is to us, to Mr. Askar. Um, uh, my, your screening on the west side uh, you do have, fortunately, your neighbor, the Walgreens, has a um, uh, five or six, I can't remember how many spruce trees there, rather large ones. They're probably at least uh, 15 to 18 feet high. But there's gaps in between there. Did, have you been able to talk with them about maybe you providing some shrubs in between or something to uh, help screen your your parking from that other business? Go ahead, Mr. Askar. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, we didn't, but I don't have a, I'm sorry, I said, uh, I don't think, no, I didn't. Uh, the reason is, is because, uh, first of all, Walgreen is not the main owner. There is another uh, company on the property as far as the landlord. And I, okay. but I don't, again, uh, as far as the screening of this particular location, I don't have a problem with it. But the problem is, is the, the way that the picture shows, it uh, shows like these big trees and there is a space between them. But in reality, I'll be honest with you, these trees are very big and it's very hard to see on the other side. Oh yeah, I, I visited, I, I, I know, and there's, there's, but there's a substantial yeah. space, maybe five feet between each of those trees still. They will grow and fill out some year, but I would just, just thought I'd inquire. It's not a critical element of my conversation, but I just thought I'd ask if you uh, made that effort to uh, see the owner of the property next to you about that. Uh, the next uh, item- uh, I don't, I don't have any contact with them at okay. all. Yeah. Well, it would be if you could. That would that would help me in approving this. Uh, at least to make the effort. Uh, the next item I had was uh, the hundred ten percent. Good. The next item is the overnight parking of vehicles uh, being repaired. Will they all be stored inside the the ones that are being worked on? Uh, they all be stored inside your new building. Uh, that that will be much definitely. That's our goal. It depends, but uh, I will say if it's car came with complete damage or very hard to put it inside, it might stay outside. But with our experience, definitely that's what we intend to do, and that's what we are gonna do because it's gonna be easy for mechanic. We prepare the work for them for the next day. So definitely, that's exactly what our goal is. Yeah. And, and and me as a customer, I would always appreciate when I go to a repair place, I appreciate if it has to remain overnight that they leave it inside, not outside, uh, just for security reasons. That's and definitely what that's definitely one of the other cases, hundred percent. Good. Um, I want to add something actually. Uh, sure. can I add something to that uh, main parking? Okay. I'm in a neighborhood uh, 
I'm in the neighborhood uh, area. I've been there for a long time, and and everybody knows me over there. I mean, my main concern is to serve this neighborhood. I'm not getting customers from M59 or anybody else's. Everybody around me is is my neighbor, and they know me as a customer word of mouth. I did not do advertisement. I will say for the last at least 17 years, if it's not the last 20 years, I never did no mailing or anything because it's all word of mouth. My goal is when I extended this this location and make it with the waiting area, we, we have a lot of things that with all the stuff and all the competition is we willing, we are planning and actually doing a valet service that picking up the car from the customer, fix it and take it back to his house. This is our goal because we have to, we have to come up with an idea that's everybody else not doing it so we can compete at this market. Very nice. I'm not, I'll be honest with you. I know there is a zoning and, and there is a zoning and there is a stuff as far as the parking lot. For us, as a, as a, for me as a businessman that been there for a long time, I know my business very well. It wasn't that our, this is not one of our issue at all. Okay. Uh, what are your hours of operation? Uh, my hours of operation is 6 to 12, as far as the garage or as far as the gas the, station? The whole, the whole, the whole gas station. The whole, the whole property. So, so 6 to 12. Okay. 6 to 12. Okay. And the mechanics uh, hours are from when to when? The mechanics, 9 to 6. Okay. Sunday off, Saturday, uh, Saturday 9 to 3. Very nice. Any further discussion from uh, the commission? Mr. Kent, I have. Mr. Raman. Raman. Just a comment. You know, I uh, was in the ZBA when it, this was discussed, I think in January. Uh, and I think we feel comfortable with the, um, the West Side wall not to be there. Because, you know, because that if you look at the uh, other property, they also have parking spots next to the shrub. So there is no point of having a wall that probably would, uh, you know, reduce the nice uh, natural beauty. So uh, that was the reason we said that there is no need to have a wall there. And uh, I just want to share that. You know, and, and overall, uh, uh, ZBA kind of liked that whole idea. Just want to share that also. Thank you. Any other comments? One quick thing for Mr. Askar, I was uh, looking at uh, some of the Google photos of your place, and I noticed uh, you have a lot of um, windshield wiper fluid stacked outside. Uh, some of those shelves were sagging. They look a little bit uh, beneath what I would say you're stand you know, from listening to you and seeing your, your new building design uh, beneath your standards. Uh, are, are those outdoor storage of... Um, merchandise going to be cleaned up or I mean I, I understand you can I, I guess the city code allows for outdoor storage of merchandise but um, maybe that's a question for Mr. Savadon to talk about but it does look a little bit uh, junky put you know in plain language the way it looks now well is that's how old is that Google yes how old is that Google picture I don't this know. is I I don't uh, know. <laughs> you know, we don't have this anymore. We sure. we did not. Yeah, we yeah we yeah we don't we we did not have a maybe in the time we did not have a rack. Uh, but we have a a very professional racks now. You know what I mean for storage for these windshield wipers, windshield watch. And if you look the new image that we have planning on, we're not gonna have this space anymore because we're planning in having some kind of nice uh, uh, facade to for the people to sit over there and wait for their cars. So this space will be gone. Uh, okay. uh, so all this uh, storage is gonna be inside, not gonna be outside. Very nice. Okay, any other yes, comments sir. for either from the commission for any anyone here before we uh, bring it to a resolution? Can I ask a quick question, Mr. Krent? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Mr. Asker, thank you for being here. I just want to thank understand you, this. Um, thank you. Um, I just want to uh, understand the rendition or the elevation looks wonderful. Those windows there thank add you. a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, I would say, beauty and at the same time style. And you said you want to move into the 21st, uh, in, into 2021. It really looks good. 
and will your uh, final project look exactly as has been shown here in terms of the colors in yes ma'am in terms of the okay got it thank you very much yes ma'am if not better i'm i'm we, we're trying to make it if it's not better that's all i can say okay because it does look good as it sees uh, seems here and of course the people sitting outside those are good images for the community and for the neighborhood node so uh, yes i would uh, highly encourage uh, to have such a nice rendition delivered to the community thank you for sure thank you ma'am i will make sure that the city of troy will be proud of this location mm -hmm. that's a promise good to hear okay are we ready for a resolution Anyone want to offer up the resolution on this item? I'll do that. Okay. Go ahead, please. We are not adding any change, right? As it is, I, I believe. Right? I, I didn't hear a request for changes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Resolve that special use approval and preliminary site plan approval for the proposed Long Lake Hill addition, southwest corner of Long Lake and Dick Winder. Section 13, currently zoned NN, neighborhood node Z, district B, granted. Any conditions we want to put on this? There are no conditions, I take it. Okay, do we have a second? Mr. I'll second. Oh, Mr. S wait, okay. Good. Mr. Mr. Fries on second. Yeah, now we have a discussion time. Uh, Mr. Savada. Yeah, yep. if I could just add that um, if you could place the condition that prior to final site plan approval, that the applicant provide uh, uh, sufficient landscape details to ensure that it's compliant and, and provide um, sufficient lighting details to, to ensure that it's compliant. We can do that. And we can review that administratively. Final. Would you like to add that, Mr. Rahman? So, prior to final approval, uh, the uh, it must are supposed to give the lighting details. And what is the other one, Mr. Savin, you said? Landscape details. And, and then landscaping. Landscaping. Okay. That's what you were going to put in there, Mr. Lambert? That's what your hand was up yes. for? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> Mr. Lambert's always one for good detail, watching or making sure we get the details correct. Uh, did we get a second on that? Those changes? Yeah, I'll second that as well. Okay, Mr. Faison seconds. Okay, then a vote call. Uh, Ms. Sarnicki, please. Sure. Ms. Malala Holly? Yes. Ms. Paracas? Yes. Mr. Rahman? Yes. Mr. Rausch? Yes. Mr. Tegel? Yes. Mr. Faison? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you very much. We all wish you well, and thank you for upgrading your uh, your building. Thank, thank you very you. much for all your support. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, the next item is a planned unit development proposed concept development plan. It's file number PUD 2020-0018. Uh, for uh, It's gonna be located at Long Lake and Crooks. Uh, it's a master plan development on the southwest corner, I'm sorry, of uh, Long Lake and Crooks. Section eight, currently zoned O for office. Uh, who's uh, gonna present on this one Mr. first? Mr. Crit, be before Mr. Carlisle goes into a summary of the application, um, sure. the applicant has a team here that's that's available to participate in tonight's meeting. Um, sure. With us this evening is, is Chris Beck from Gensler. He's the project architect. 
We've got uh, Julie Kroll from Fleisch and Vandenbrink, the, the uh, traffic consultant for the applicant. And we have Tony Antone from Kajoyan. And, and what we'd like to do is have uh, Mr. Antone uh, introduce uh, uh, Kajoyan and, and talk a little, just kind of provide a, an introduction uh, to the Planning Commission, if you, if you wouldn't mind. Sounds good, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission. Uh, my name is Tony Antone, as Brent said. Uh, I'm Executive Vice President of the Kajoyan Companies, and I see a number of newer faces on the Planning Commission. Um, so I wanted to just have a couple of quick minutes to, um, to let some of you know, if you don't already, who we are. Um, the Kajoyan Companies have developed um, 103 million square feet of space over the last 50 years. Um, and I don't think there's a single city in Michigan that we've developed more than in the city of Troy. Um, some of the projects that you'll recognize are the PNC Center, uh, which you know many of us know it as the top of Troy. Uh, we've developed uh, 900 Tower Drive, 5440 Corporate Drive, 5250 uh, Corporate Drive, the Flagstar Headquarters, Troy Corporate Center, which is 840 and 880 um, Long Lake. So we've we've been around uh, quite a bit through the city of Troy, and um, we are excited to embark upon what we're calling sort of the gateway to North Troy. This development at Long Lake and Crooks, we're very excited about it. Um, and um, with me, as as Brent said, I've got Chris Beck from Gensler. Um, you know, Gensler is a global architectural firm. Uh, with local offices in Detroit. They've done incredible projects all over the world, frankly, and we're really excited that uh, we're partnering with Gensler to, um, to do this gateway project. So uh, with that, um, I'd like to, I guess, turn it back over maybe to, um, to Ben, and, and we're, we're here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Tony. Okay, Ben, you're on. It, and Ben, if... Uh, if you want to pull up the PowerPoint, I think I've got some slides here to, to start this off. So we thought we'd, we'd use this uh, opportunity to uh, do a very, very brief tutorial to the Planning Commission on, on plan unit developments, because I know that there's some, some new members who've never been involved in a, in a plan unit development before. So. You know, we'll ask the question, and or I should say, ask and answer the question: What is a plan unit development? So, next slide. So, a plan unit development—it's also known as a as a PUD. Um, it's it's a negotiated process, and this is taken right out of the zoning ordinance. the The intent of the PUD is is to permit flexibility in design and use, and and you. You do this by going through the PUD review and approval process, which which we're, we're getting in, we're starting this evening. And there's a lot of different goals of PUDs, and I've I've got some listed here. Um, I'll just read out some of them. One of the goals is to result in in long-term social, environmental, and economic sustainability. Um, permit permit uh, development patterns that respond to changing public and private needs, uh, and, and ensuring compatibility. Uh, of design and compatibility of use, not only on the site, but with the neighbors. And the final uh, goal, which, which is a very important one, is to ensure that the development is consistent with uh, the intent of the master plan. Next slide. So I, I, I tried summarizing the, the PUD review and approval process in a really simplistic manner. Um, there's, there's four main steps. And the first step is the, the concept development plan or the CDP. And what we're doing this evening or Kajoyan is, is doing this evening with assistance from his team is introducing the concept um, uh, that, which is shown in the concept development plan. And what they will ultimately seek is approval of that concept development plan. Now, the Planning Commission is a recommending body for the concept development plan, and this will go to, the, to City Council at a, at a public both both bodies will have to have public hearings. And what they seek is to approve the concept. They, they, they approve the, the, the PUD agreement, which includes the details of, of um, what they want approved, including, including phasing, because it's a lot of these larger projects like this are phased over numerous years. 
and then and also get the property rezoned to PUD. So once that happens, they'll have a concept that everyone agrees with, and uh, and and it'll be rezoning. So they'll have re they'll have entitlement. So they can go once they have that entitlement, they can go recruit uh, tenants, uh, developers, what what have you, um, and start really aggressively marketing this project because they they'll know that that the city supports this project at a conceptual level. Once they do that, they will be able to submit preliminary development plans or PDPs, which are detailed site plans. Now, in a, in a perfect world, they could they could get a developer who wants to develop the whole thing all at once and could submit a, a preliminary development plan, a complete site plan for the whole 25 acres. Um, now in, in all likelihood, that won't happen, although I'm sure Mr. Anton hopes it would. Um, but but in, in all likelihood, we would get phased, phased applications. So maybe he would get an office tenant and a parking deck and a, and a restaurant at the same at, at one time. And we would we would get uh, site plans for that phase. Um, and just like the site plan, site plan review process, once they get PDP approval, um, they would submit uh, final development plans, which is engineering drawings, and we would review that uh, internally and, and administratively. But once they get approval of the engineering plans, uh, they can seek building permits and start construction. Um, the, the PDP, uh, the preliminary development plan, is also requires a planning commission public hearing and a city council public hearing. And the planning commission is a uh, is a is a reviewing and, and recommending body, and council approves the, the PDP. Next next slide. So I'll, I'll give you three examples of some of some actual projects that were reviewed and approved. Uh, these are PUDs that are in Troy. Uh, the very first PUD that we reviewed and approved was Woodside Bible Northwood PUD. This is on uh, Rochester Road, um, south of South Boulevard. Um, it is a mixed-use project. It includes um, almost 170 units of townhomes and condominiums, a large church and a, and a neighborhood community center. Um, and uh, as part of that, the Woodside Bible preserved 25 acres of uh, MDEQ regulated wetlands. Next slide. Another example is the Big Beaver Kilmer PUD. This is another mixed-use project. It's located on the north side of, of Big Beaver, it is east of Livernois. Um, it is a it includes 19,000 square feet of retail, and behind that, to the north of that, there are 16 townhome units. Next slide. The final example is located uh, fairly close to City Hall, across across Livernois. It's Stonecrest PUD. It includes a 100 bed assisted living facility. Um, it was it was an interesting property because it, it has there's a lot of floodplains and wetlands on the property. So what they did is they partnered with the city, and the city allowed them to put their 80 space parking lot on city property, and we allowed them to do site grading uh, on city property to include their detention basin basin, and the trade off was they provided a fifty thousand dollar contribution to the city, and they assisted uh, the city in developing a public dog park. So it was a a true public-private partnership and a very creative approach to the PUD. So those are three examples. Um, they're all they're all unique applications, and uh, we we really look forward to kind of rolling up our sleeves and getting involved in this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Okay, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm going to briefly introduce the project um, and then allow for planning commission discussion. So this is a very very high level summary of, of the proposed application. Um, the location of the site for the proposed, uh, what we're calling right now the Long Lake Crooks PUD, is at the northwest corner of Long Lake and Crooks. Just for reference, uh, this is Long Lake and this is Crooks. Um, and the, the site is currently outlined in red. It's a 24 acre site. It's currently vacant. Um, there is significant tree cover and there are four regulated wetlands, uh, four wetlands, I should say, uh, on the site. Uh, the site plan uh, proposed by the applicant includes uh, multiple buildings and a multiple phase approach. Um, the most significant uh, development are two proposed office um, buildings. Uh, one is proposed for six stories and one is proposed for eight stories. Uh, in total, they're almost a half a million uh, square feet. To uh, accommodate those two uh, office buildings, the applicant proposes two parking decks located uh, just to the north of the buildings. Um, in addition, the applicant is proposing um, three small um, retail uh, outlet buildings. These will either be um, restaurants, retail, something of that nature. 
Uh, the fourth major component to the development is a five-story hotel located here at the south uh, west corner of the site. Um, again, the applicant proposes to be five stories, approximately around uh, 220 bedrooms, uh, includes a restaurant. Uh, and the other elements to the master uh, to the site plan is um, amenities. So, applicant is proposing some outdoor gathering spaces, uh, a water feature here at the corner of Crooks and Long Lake. Um, as part of that, they're putting in a, a proposing a pedestrian walking path around the, the water feature. Um, so there's there's some other um, amenities that the applicant is proposing. With regards to um, the the city's master plan, um, the planning commission may remember that uh, recently with the with a, with the uh, most recent update of the master plan, we spent a lot of time focusing on North Troy um, and recognize that it really to survive and um, it really needs to evolve. Um, it's it's uh, historically been offense uh, oriented, uh, dominated uh, uses up there. Uh, and there was discussion about evolving, um, including more service uses, uh, more amenities for both the existing uh, office workers in uh, that area, but also some of the adjacent neighborhoods. Um, so the main components of the mass plan included uh, a mix of uses, um, as well as providing uh, service and accessory uses to complement uh, the office market. And lastly, providing significant pedestrian amenities in the area. Um, the, the area that we're talking about is actually located in, in this portion of the mass plan um, designation. So as you can see in the master plan, it includes a mix of some uh, residential infill, uh, it includes a large community gathering space, and it includes um, some service infill um, that, that actually front right on Long Lake. Um, some of the additional elements that were also considered in the master plan was some residential use on this site, creation of a community gathering space, uh, wayfinding, and multimodal transportation improvements. With regards to traffic, as, as Director Savant noted, um, we have two traffic experts uh, on uh, the meeting tonight, so I won't go into too much detail, but I will note that the applicant did provide a traffic study. Um, the traffic study was based on proposed a highest use uh, of the sites, so those uses may evolve and change, uh, but they proposed uh, at this point, uh, the traffic study was done with the, with the most amount of traffic uh, possible at the site. They note at, um, there were average of approximately 25,000 trips uh, per day uh, with a peak hour total of a little over a thousand in the morning and a little over 2000 uh, in the evening. Uh, they note that there will be some um, future road uh, improvements will be necessary. And these include significant improvements around the Crooks Road corporate drive I-75 intersection. Um, so I'll let the applicants um, expert go into more detail the planning which has more questions on that. The applicant is seeking um, flexibility uh, for this development. Uh, flexibility in phasing, flexibility in uses and design features. They note that this is a multi-year, potentially 10 to maybe 20 year build out. Um, and so they're asking for flexibility um, with this uh, with this uh, this site. So we do note that, that we um, are comfortable with some flexibility. Um, however, we do want a little more firmer commitment to the planning commission with, with regards to uh, phasing uses and other details. So with all that being said, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I have outlined six site, uh, six questions I think the Planning Commission should consider uh, when discussing this application with the applicant. First, um, does the Planning Commission support the proposed mix of uses? Uh, is there a mu use missing that the Planning Commission thinks should be considered for the site? Um, are there other, rec uh, other master plan recommendations that should be incorporated? Residential use of site, uh, larger community gathering space, uh, wayfinding or multi-modal um, transportation improvements, um, design layouts for the planning commission to consider. We know that there's limited development that actually fronts Long Lake. Um, our, our two one-story commercial restaurant buildings on Long Lake a missed opportunity. Does the planning commission support the water feature at the hard corner of Crooks and Long Lake? And does the planning commission support the height of eight stories? Four, could the applicant better preserve or protect on-site natural features? It appears um, from what's shown that basically the site will be masqueraded, uh, thus removing any uh, require any regulated wetland as well as all the trees. Uh, five, um, how much development flexibility is the planning commission willing to consider? Uh, again, with regards to use and phasing. And lastly, are there any additional design uh, or amenities that the applicant should consider? Mr. Chairman, those are just some questions I think the Planning Commission should consider when they do consider this application tonight. Thank, Thank you. you.
Does that conclude uh, your presentation, Ben? That's it for us, yes. Okay. Uh, any comments from the commission for either the, uh, well, we'll start with uh, city staff. We'll start with uh, uh, Ben's presentation and Brent's presentation. Any any uh, thoughts regarding those presentations before I get the developer in engaged? Yes, Mr. Lambert. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to, to say I do like the proposed water feature at the corner. Uh, I think it's a nice uh, way of uh, kind of transitioning away from the um, the existing green space. I do have a couple of concerns. One is, and maybe this is more of a question for the uh, applicants, is why no residential use was looked at on the site, some type of uh, 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 dense uh, housing that could be a good uh, blend with the hotel that's planned for the site. And the other is, I'm a, little, I'm a little concerned about some of the green space that's being used. Is there a way to maybe reduce the number of surface parking on the site and in a way to preserve and protect some more of the green space on the location? Anyone from the developer have an answer for that? Let me let me try to take on the um, the residential aspect, uh, and then I could turn it over to Chris on the on the green space. Um, in, in the actual draft of the PUD that we submitted, we did provide for potential multifamily um, in, in uh, portions of this site. We're trying to give ourselves maximum flexibility because we really don't want to take this to the market until we know what the city's pleasure is with this. I mean, we think we have it right, but of course we want to do this in partnership with you all. So, um, our intention is to take this out also to the multifamily market as well as the office market. Okay. Mr. Craig? Beck, any, any thoughts about uh, the green space? I can speak quickly to the, to the green space aspect relative to the approach that we take have taken based on the drawings that are shown. Um, as we know, or we know that the site effectively is sloping towards the southeast corner, which is frankly where I, we have featured the water feature as we have in that location. And quite frankly, it creates a nice buffer between development and that corner and also helps to energize the overall streetscape on Long Lake, which is, you know, <clears throat> was definitely a focus towards us. Uh, both in terms of the location of retail as well as the public access to that streetscape and, and that sidewalk energizing area. Um, the actual current uh, tree um, um, quantities and species, quite frankly, although look very dense and lush, are, are not all of that great of quality, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so our, our approach is, you know, depending on how this development ultimately comes about, is that we would certainly try to preserve as much of the green space as, as physically possible, uh, but also, you know, balancing between is ultimately shrub and, and lower quality species with higher quality and better amenities that the site will provide in the development itself. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Mr. Craig? From, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Hudson. Um, I've got some topics here. I think they coincide with what Ben has given us uh, to consider. But in reviewing the documents that were sent, here are some of my concerns with the concept. The buildings are too tall if you take a look at the surrounding area. Uh, eight stories is beyond belief. And I, I think if you look around, you'll see a lot of those buildings are maximum four stories. I'm concerned about the height. Secondly, I echo uh, Mr. Lambert's concern about residential. I'd like to see a mixed use in there with some residences instead of a series of tall commercial buildings of a retail and office. Speaking of office, I think there's an office glut in Troy right now, and I'm finding it hard to believe that we need two more tall office buildings in that section. The idea for a hotel may be great in concept, but we've got so many hotels in Troy right now, and a large hotel uh, just adjacent to this project uh, in Northfield area 
and the um, I can't think of the name of it, but they're right across the street. We just had uh, some years ago a residential hotel go in. So there's hotel space over there. And I think if this is going to be for a community, that the water effort should probably be placed in the center somewhere so that occupants of the houses, multifamily units, offices, retail, have got a focal point uh, in this area. If we want walkability, that's a good spot to do it instead of sticking it in the corner of a busy intersection. Now, those are my initial thoughts, and I'd be willing to listen to everybody else's thoughts, uh, but if this is a conceptual plan right now, <clears throat> I think you've got to consider all of that. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Paracas. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for presenting um, your idea. It's a really interesting concept and it's actually really exciting, I think. Um, what I like about the concept is it's on Crooks and Long Lake, which I feel are already sort of in an office area and um, an industrial area, and they're also large roads. So I think it's in keeping with that. Um, I guess my, maybe my view is a little bit different from some of the others so far. I would actually be opposed to the residential idea. I kind of like this area being non-residential. Um, I do agree with Mr. Hudson about the height. I would consider bringing, bringing it down a little bit. I think five stories would be acceptable, but I think anything beyond that might be out of place. Um, I also agree with Mr. Hudson about moving that water um, fountain into the center. And I do understand that it slopes, but if we're going to be constructing this in a way to, um, to maximize the benefit of the property, I think we have to consider it as a whole. Um, and I'd just like to throw out some ideas um, that I've had after spending quite a bit of time I drove around the area and I also drove to some other areas in Troy and also Birmingham to get some ideas. It sounds like that Wilshire area where they have the, um, you know, where the Shake Shack is and, and those juice bars and stuff. It seems to me that they started building that area and then almost it was too late to to create a walkable area because it's a lot of parking lot. I think if, if a little bit of planning went into this area, if you could consider sort of a boulevard running through the center of this 25 acres with the entrance coming off of that corporate drive, you could actually use the parking garages to allow people to come in and park and then have that boulevard be for no vehicles, but have it be more of a plaza, like a cobbled road with fountains. And then, you know, I guess maybe with COVID, I'm thinking a little bit differently now, but a lot of, you know, restaurants, ice cream parlors, um, salons, destination places for people to come and just picture it between March and November, people sitting outside under pavilions and umbrellas and dining and actually coming and spending time there. People can drop their kids off. People with little kids can let them run around. People in the buildings of the offices can use that places for lunch. People in the hotel have everything walkable at their disposal. People can host weddings in the hotel and then have all these things to use. So I'm picturing it more as a destination for Troy residents to use, um, not have residential, but have people be able to park with the intent of staying there for a while and, and spending money and, and whatnot. Um, I, I'd prefer not to see restaurants on Long Lake with their own parking lots. I'd rather have it be the facade on Long Lake and Crooks but the parking be behind on the other side and people have to walk a little bit. Um, and then consider putting a walking path around the entire 25 acres. Lifetime Fitness is ne next door. Troy High is next door. People can walk over, take walks, grab a cup of coffee at a coffee shop. That's how I'm envisioning this. We're, we've been talking about Troy being walkable and we've tried to do it on Big Beaver. It didn't work. Um, I think what we found is that we need to find a place that people can drive to or bike to at this point and have a place to spend some time at. 
so anyway, sorry for being long winded, but that uh-huh. was sort of what I envisioned. Um, I mean, of course, it's your guys' idea and it sparked all this, but Booth Park in Birmingham gave me some ideas, um, putting a playground, but that's how I would love to see this area developed. Go ahead. Uh, and then, uh, uh, Mala, Mala, help me with it. You know, Malala Hali. Malala Hali. Thank you, Grant. Um, I second a lot of what Ms. Barakas said. Uh, I was looking at my notes as she was telling me because I did take down some notes on this master plan uh, project. And my first impression looking at it is I like the water feature, yes. However, I also see that there are a lot of parking spaces. Um, my thing is this is too concrete in, in the way it appears. Um, I like to see a little bit more of a gathering area. If we are going to use this as a place for public gathering, as Ms. Barakis was pointing out, my notes is what I have written is, can we extend the perimeter uh, that you have around the water feature and have something even more centralized so people from all um, um, north, south, east, west quadrants can use the area more efficiently as a gathering place. The other thing that I also wanted to let you know is um, number five on the proposed plan where it says site amenities, outdoor activity area, compared to the amount of buildings and parking spaces that we see here, there it is so few. And uh, with COVID-19, I know we all understand that outdoor spaces have become very, very uh, precious to all of us. Uh, outdoor um, seating areas, gathering areas, eating areas have become very, very important. I think Stroy needs to have that ambiance created where people can come, walk, sit, enjoy leisurely, um, engage in conversations. And as Ms. Baraka said, yes, absolutely have some nice walking space, kids moving about. It should be an area which where people get attracted to. And that is what I personally speaking would love to see in a project of this, this magnitude. And um, I highly encourage you, your architects and everybody who's working on this team to think about how best can we deliver a space that is usable, enjoyable by, by all people uh, and, and whether it is hotel residents or uh, residential areas or office buildings, even the office folks would like to take a break and walk on a nice day outside. I don't see any perimeter there. Uh, let's just say your uh, buildings, one, uh, the two buildings are office spaces and that's how they come to be built. Where is an area where they can just get out and enjoy the sunshine and soak in some vitamin D? I don't see any space Uh, immediately outside their building. All I see is a huge parking spot in the front and the back. So a a plan of this magnitude, I would like to see a little bit more of engagement, community engagement and uh, citizen engagement happening. That's that's definitely something. I do like the water feature. That's that's a nice addition. It breaks up the space a little bit. And um, according to the proposal, if I remember correctly, there are 239 trees that are healthy. I just want to know what is being considered on that end in the sense, are, are they going to be in some way maintained or um, is there something that is being thought about what the 239 trees, um, are we knocking off more trees? Uh, how many are we knocking off? Um, something that I want to see in terms of nature preservation as well. Thank you. Any response from developers? To the, to the, especially the trees? Is it going yeah, to be I, Yeah, I, I can take this on. Um, this, I, I guess, from my our perspective, this kind of gets into a little bit of a gray area from the standpoint that the the plan that we are depicting, although showing a conceptual approach, um, as as uh, Tony had identified here, is, is one that is intended to be flexible based on the uses that may come about. And as such, 
um, I, I can pretty much confidently say that the plan most likely will change significantly as those users and as that development occurs, which will be most likely phased over periods of time. So I, I very much appreciate the comments that are being brought forth here. And I think that they're very much valuable and, and certainly need to be addressed relative to the what will end up being the final development. Uh, so, to, so with that said, uh, in answering the question relative to trees, um, yeah, I can't say that we have currently identified how many of the existing trees will be saved first based on the plan that we are suggesting, because quite frankly, the plan that we are suggesting is, is more to help derive a level of concept and understanding as to the flexibility that the site wants to, we are looking to achieve here versus an actual plan that can specify where exactly roads are, what exactly trees will be saved and which ones will not be. And, and, and hopefully that, I, I conveyed that in a print manner. And just from the standpoint that, you know, I, I think it, that the plan itself is going to evolve considerably as development involves. Um, um, and, and we can certainly then address every one of these concerns and, and comments uh, in, in the manner as those developments occur. Very nice. Um, go ahead, I'll go ahead. I'll get, let Mr. Raman go first, and Mr. Rausch. Okay, so you know, uh, I I know we spoke about parkings, the uh, parking spots. Uh, there are two parking structures uh, considered here, right? So those are well, how, how many levels? My question is, can we reduce the surface parking and then increase the make the parking structure taller so that we don't have to occupy the green space. That's the first one. And then the other thing is building locations. Is it because of the wetland limitation that we have the buildings are kind of at the current location or uh, we can place the building anywhere within that 25 acres? So the, the answer to the first question is yes, we can certainly increase parking in the parking decks provided that we are uh, allowed to do so relative to the use and the height. Um, there, there's nothing suggesting that the decks can't support greater capacity. Um, the original intent, quite frankly, is to provide the, the, the predominant capacity within those decks, but yet also provide appropriate and, and uh, close proximity parking for both the office buildings relative to visitors and short-term parking scenarios there, as well as the retail components and, of course, the hotel. Um, but there's there's absolutely nothing to suggest that we can't push that further and reduce overall surface parking and support that by structured parking in whether at the two locations that we currently are showing or those locations adjusting appropriately to to better align itself with with where the development occurs. Um, to your second question, uh, I think it's it's kind of falls along the same path. The buildings, you know, are, are again conceptually located, uh, but there's nothing saying that they can't move either, uh, in, you know, whether north, south, or east, west. So uh, I have just a, a question that's related to that, Mr. Grant. I can continue, right? Go right, right ahead. Yeah, sure. So yeah, I know that some of us we mentioned that you know the, the corner we are spent. Uh, uh, to me, I mean, I lack of. Woodward is kind of wasting that area, just having some water. I was thinking the, the whole thing can be in the center of the, uh, the space in the 25 acre. And instead of having water, can we have some kind of like a uh, place where we can have some concert in the evening or some gathering place? Because I know people were talking about it and making something attractive, but not like water. So that's something could, and it, can it be placed in the middle? Because I have seen some other places like Florida and other cities I went, I don't exactly remember. I think Okeechobee is one city I went in Florida. I, it was pretty good. It was paved with uh, uh, some kind of bricks. I think somebody mentioned that also, but it's kind of like a happening place so that in the evening after work, people can gather and have some, you know, open air concert free, you know, so that could be a little bit more interesting and attractive rather than having a, uh, some area, uh, uh, I would say, not properly used by having water. Definitely water is nice, but can be, I mean, better utilized to meet the requirements or needs of the Troy uh, people. So that's it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could... Yeah, just... just... Go, ahead, Go ahead. Follow up. Go ahead. 
I'm sorry. Um, just, just to uh, add a comment to that, um, we know we're going to need water detention. So quite frankly, we're doing a little bit of double duty there. Um, there's got to be a significant water detention aspect to the site. And, and hence, that was, uh, that was the driver as to needing a water location and then utilizing that as not only a functional component, but also certainly an amenity component relative to the site and hopefully to the community abroad. And I was just going to add to that. Well, you know, it, it, you know, by by circumstances of, you know, the site logistics, that area really wants to be water. Um, as Chris said, we could certainly jazz it up and put seating around it or the fountain. You know, do those sorts of things. And I think, you know, based on the other comments, we'll also look at a secondary area more centralized in the site that would be, you know, maybe not wet, but like you said. Um, some sort of other feature that would be um, conducive to bringing people together and hanging out and doing that sort of stuff. So I like those comments a lot. We'll certainly um, look at those. You know, I think it's, it's everything is a function of, of density. So it really is important for us to understand if the commission is, is willing to let us go, you know, beyond five stories uh, I mean, right now, as the, as the site dictates, we could put, you know, whatever, a couple hundred thousand square feet office building on the site. We think that's a complete waste of this sort of gateway site. Um, so really, the, 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 the conversation, I'd love to hear more about the, um, the, 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 the problems anyone might have with, with real density, because... What, who we're trying to really attract is an international headquarter user who may frankly say, we want to do 500,000 square feet in one building. And you know, those are the types of real drivers to a development like this. But if, if, you know, if you guys say there's no chance we're going over six stories, then we really need to calibrate off of that because we're not going to bang our heads against the wall here. We want to make sure that we're in unison and on the same page as it relates to density. We, you know, the, the walkability and all that sort of stuff. You know, I, I think we have traffic experts on the phone. We don't need to get into those details now because we'll have to come back at that time and, and prove out the traffic study and do those sorts of things. Um, but if there's ever a site for helping the walkability and to really kind of creating the atmosphere that we're looking for in North Troy, this would be the one because we really don't have homes in, in, in proximity to Long Lake and Crooks. They're, they're a good distance away. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go to Jerry Roush first and then John Tagle. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Antone, wonderful uh, concept. The questions I have though are concerning the uh, office space mainly and you know currently there's over two million square feet of vacant office space in troy in this particular area and with the uh i'm sure that the numbers of actual occupancy it's uh it's probably a greater amount of, of space that's not being utilized in light of covid and what's changed um in addition to that i was talking to a, a friend within the last few weeks that's uh, with uh, a Detroit-based uh, law firm with a national presence. And their perspective was they're probably gonna end up with using about one third of the, the office space they currently have based upon what they've learned with people working from home. So with all of that in mind, do you really feel that there's a, a market for that amount of space? My personal concern is that the space that we have in Troy with this much currently vacant and the likelihood of, of, uh, of having more sublease or uh, non-renewals coming on the market, that we're going to have to be looking to repurpose office buildings that exist in Troy. Uh, it makes me wonder whether going pure office like this would make sense. And I'd like to hear what you have to say about that. But in conjunction with that, the uh, uh, of late, I've read a lot about and seen where a lot of 
uh, millennials have been wanting to take advantage of the urban environments, the live work areas. Um, it certainly appears that uh, the development that's occurred at Big Beaver and Crooks with the apartments that have gone up in conjunction with the uh, the buildings across from your top of Troy and what used to be the VW building, I'm not sure what it is today. Um, uh, I wonder if, if something like that developed as part of this would make uh, a little bit more sense. It would certainly uh, temper your office potential of loss. Uh, it, it's resolved the issues of having some uh, some residential in that area would also create uh, a market of users for this boulevard and in uh, the traction space. Um, and, and lastly, as it re relates to office again, I I'm sure that if you put up the office buildings there that you could um, you could fill them, I'm sure, because they'd be beautiful spaces and they'd be the spaces that people would want to go into today. But even if you did, it would be at the expense of the other buildings that are in Troy. Uh, I, I mean, let's face it, the, 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 the older buildings that don't have the amenities that, that the newer ones do, those are the ones that usually end up suffering with the empty space. So, so again, I think that there's, from my perspective, a great concern on being able to fill that much office space. And would love to hear what you think about what I've had to say. I, I really appreciate those comments. Um, I think that they are um, spot on. I think that th this, you've been, you just, <laughs> you just uh, spoke what I've been living and breathing <laughs> over the course uh, since March of, of 2020. Um, I, I will say this. We are never going to build these office buildings speculatively. That is not our intention. We won't do it. It would be foolish to do that. <clears throat> what, what, and we're also not living only in the COVID moment, right? Because this is, as Brent said, this is a decade's worth of work that's going to be ahead of us on this site uh, if we do it right. We have built headquarter projects for hundreds of international companies. Uh, as I said, in, we're in 24 states. So we've, we've really done this um, over the past 50 years a lot. And sometimes when a headquarter user comes from Germany or Japan or India or wherever it is, um, they want their own thing and they're not willing to go into a, an existing product. So either Troy's gonna have a look at it or they're going to go to Auburn Hills or Rochester or Farmington Hills or one of the other local surroundings if they want to be in Southeast Michigan. As, as all of you know, Troy is fairly built out. So there's very few spots left in Troy that if somebody or a company wanted to be here, they could say, we want to put our mark on that area and build it exactly how we want it. And that's what we envision here. Um, we don't think it robs from our own office buildings. Heck, we have an office building right next door, 5250 Corporate Drive. So we don't, we don't think it's apples and oranges. This is going to be marketed to a headquarter user that wants a brand new project. And that's, that's, that's the bottom line. Now, you, you might say that... Um, well, we have a lot. Of, yeah, I've heard we have a lot of hotels and there, there's restaurants and all that. Again, this is North Troy is is really sort of coming into its own as its own city. I mean, you know, we, we've divided as a developer, we've divided Troy up into three you know areas where you have Big Beaver, you've got North Troy and you've got sort of the, the Maple and South Troy area. North Troy is really building up to be something special. And we think between our project and what might come of um, the project on the other end, um, I think Mohammed Kaz Quasi owns it. Um, you could have two bookends to really fuel a, a pretty neat area in North Troy. So, and I also think this, we're experiencing both ends of the spectrum with COVID. 
we're experiencing folks who say working from home is okay. We're doing okay. We want to downsize by 10%. We are also experiencing tenants who are growing during COVID, believe it or not, because they want to socially distance more inside their space. I've had an accounting firm that has grown twice during COVID uh, in Farmington Hills for that very reason. So I want you to, to, to make sure that we're all on the same page as it relates to how we think this is going to go. This is going to go as a build to suit for a headquarter user. Now, might it be for all eight stories? No, it might not be. It might, they might come around and say, we want 400,000 square feet. We love the, 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 the tower approach. We'll do it on, we want it on six stories. We, we like the parking deck. We want to make the top deck uh, more functional where we could have a walking, you know, uh, pavilion and do bocce and maybe a tennis court on the deck and those sorts of things. This is a process for us to get that flexibility and then go do what we do and go lure the types of tenants and, and users um, from all over the world that either we have relationships with or who are coming into the area. And it's not going to be in 2021. It's going to be coming into the area in, in the subsequent years to really um, make a mark in this, you know, in, in this North Troy area. So I don't disagree with a single thing that you said, but I think that it's, it's going to be a, a, a slightly different because of who we're going after and how we're going to do it. Follow up, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, as it relates to that kind of user, I can understand why that would not have the, the kind of impact on the, the market, the office market that would cause a great concern. But by the same token, you must be looking for some kind of limitations from us in the amount of speculative space you'd be able to go after with that kind of user. In other words, they want four. They want, they want uh, three hundred thousand square feet, and you want to build five. Okay. Yeah, well, I definitely want that flexibility because that's the impetus. If if they don't have to be in their own building, then I can certainly use economies of scale to you know to build. Uh, and, and and trust me when I tell you that there's a lot of folks out there who, in addition to the the folks who want their own building. There's a lot of folks out there who want brand new space and won't come to a second generation uh, building. They won't come as much as I want to pour money into the top of Troy building or 900 Tower Drive. They just won't go to those because they want brand new. So, yes, I, I agree with you. I don't want to be limited to that, um, but it's all going to depend on what that user who wants three or 400,000 square feet, if they have to have their own building, which more than likely they will want their own building because they'll have you know, security and all those sorts of things that go with it. But if they don't, I, I do want that flexibility if I, can, um, if I can build more. And again, I think that that works in tandem with you know, the, 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 the walkability and the, and the vibrancy that we're trying to create in this region. So to that end, what about incorporating residential? We want to be open. We, we want to have the possibility of residential. We, we incorporated that into our PUD draft document. Um, so we, we definitely want that, that flexibility. We're not the, we, we don't do a whole lot of multifamily, um, you know, as, as Kajoyan. Um, but if, if there is a market for that, most likely we'll partner with the developer who does. And, and we'd like that flexibility to be able to, to do that as well. Do you see the desirability for residential in conjunction with the office, aside from your not being in that business, so to speak? Yeah, we see We see the project that, that was referred to earlier is the 888 building, which was the former Volkswagen building. <clears throat> and that project has had tremendous success. Now, I don't know what's going on with it in the COVID world, um, but I can tell you, you know, pre-COVID, we looked at that and said, wow, you know, that these, these guys really did a great job of sort of rebranding, creating vibrancy. And I would have done it 
you know, a little different um, than, than what they did. But in terms of, of how they sort of recreated that, that area, it was impressive. And I think it, it is um, a testament to being able to do that in other places in the city. But, but you don't see it as a, as a marketable tool as part of your concept and selling it to a, a, a national tenant. Say it again, Mr. Rush. Uh, you, you don't see it as a market, a marketable, a desirable tool to incorporate in the concept plan in trying to sell it uh, as you have it today. Well, again, we, we thought it was in the concept plan. We uh, again, we I'm incorporated sorry, I'm talking the, about the drawing. I, I, I guess that's oh, what sorry. I'm, well, and that's what I would assume you'd be showing somebody. Yes, well, um, you know, the, the drawings were meant to be more of, of you know, kind of the towers, but the actual verbiage in the PUD draft does have the multifamily component in it, so it, it, it's just going to be how we pitch it to the various end users. It's going to start with office headquarters. That's where the start has to be, in our minds. Okay, Mr. Tagle. Thank you. Um, uh, and I think I want to start off by saying I agree with a lot of the comments you've heard here tonight. Uh, some of the ones that I just want to reiterate, um, I believe this should be a community destination place as well. Um, when I look at the concept plan right now, um, I, I really think it's too heavy on the vehicular and should be more geared towards circulation or pedestrian circulation. Push the vehicular maybe to the edges or not out of that core area where it can be more of a, a, a pedestrian amenity. Um, I also maybe will we'll differ a little bit with some of the commissioners, but I'm not afraid of the density. I'm not afraid of the massing. I think what would help uh, a lot is next time you come in front of us, Give us some basic massing models. Show us what these, you know, what a seven or eight story building might look like and where it's really positioned. Um, because I could see that as kind of a backdrop to what might be happening in front of it uh, or around it. Um, residential, I think, could be a very key component. I'm sure you remember the, uh, the former Kmart project uh, over on the Kmart site where they had mixed use in tower buildings that where they had the retail and they had office and they had residential. Um, I remember that having a lot of legs to it. Unfortunately, the project never came to fruition, but I think just that combination uh, of mix was, uh, was really something very, very powerful for that development. Um, and I also want to say to my fellow commissioners, uh, I have a lot of respect for this team. Uh, Gensler, as was introduced, is a worldwide architecture firm. They do stuff that would knock your socks off, uh, and I would expect that this site will uh, will warrant that as well. And Kojan, they've been around for a long time. They do nice work. So I really, I hope you take uh, the comments you hear tonight and, and really start to let them germinate, start to really develop something exciting, which I know we all want, um, but I think it's in good hands. So thank you. Okay, Mr. F Mr. Faison, you had something to say? Uh, I, I did, I did. And and most, if not all, of what I had to say has been said already. So I'm just going to mention just a handful of things. Uh, first, uh, I'll echo Mr. Tagle and say I'm not as concerned about the massing or the size of the office buildings, depending on where they're positioned on the site. The other thing I'd say is I like the comment from the developer about the willingness to put an amenity more toward the interior of the site. And then the third point, and I know this was covered extensively in other comments, I, I do think residential makes a lot of sense in this site, creating that environment of live, work and play, walkability, activity after the business day in, in this location. So, and, and the final point I'd make is, I, I, I think all the conversation we're having, I think the plan that was presented and all the conversation we're having is exciting about, to me, about what can actually be done on, on that 25 acre site. So, thank you. Uh, Ms. Baracus, see your hand up. 
Um, yeah, I just want to speak again because after hearing everyone's, um, you know, thoughts on it, I have changed my mind a little bit. Um, I agree with Mr. Tagle that the density and the massing um, doesn't bother me as much now that I have a better understanding of um, the idea that you might be going after, you know, a, a headquarters idea, and if they're wanting something bigger, I wouldn't be opposed to that. So. Um, you know, that is my position at this time that I, I'm open to that idea. Um, I'm also now um, willing to, to accept, um, you know, to consider um, residential. I guess um, it, it would, in my mind, need to be high rise living, lofts, um, something really modern with targeting um, the young youth employees who would be coming to these places, not families. I, I mean, I shouldn't say not families, but I guess what I'm saying is what I don't want to see is a bunch of townhouses that are two stories all of a sudden in this area that would just not, you know, I want it to make sense and be attractive as well. So, you know, as residential can work, but it has to fit the plan. And then, um, my final thought, I mean, I already described my, my dream there with the corridor, with a pedestrian um, feel. As long as we don't lose sight of the fact that we still want it to be a destination for Troy residents. So I know we've talked about COVID and the impact it had. Um, I don't think that um, the value of outdoor space is going to go away anytime soon. And what I mean by that is, I mean, you can go to Bolin Park and see people drive there just to walk around, to have their kids run around and play. It's, it's a huge commodity at this point, but also the outdoor eating and simply a place for all of these people who are going to lose their office space because they're now going to be required to work from home. They want a place to go and take their laptop and sit in a coffee shop outside or inside and do their work outside their home. So I'd like to not lose sight of serving Troy residents as well, who, who would like a place to come and have a coffee and do all these things that, that draws people in and keeps them there for an hour or two and leaves throughout the day. And even a bar at night to have it happening at night. So th those are my final ideas. And I just wanted you to know that I have been influenced by the other commissioners and I've changed my mind a little bit to give you an idea of my position. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I guess I'll, oh, uh, Ms. Mala, ha, Mala, I'll say it right now. <laughs> Mala La Holly. Thank you, Mr. Krent. Just a quick uh, question. Um, now that we are talking about how the space is being envisioned by all the uh, commissioners, um, do you have any plan? I, and I know this is going way into the future, but are we considering EV parking spaces at all when you think about parking spaces? Oh, yeah. Do you have that in mind for the future yeah, as well? EV yes. parking spaces? Okay. Thank you much. Sure. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Savadon. Yeah, I uh, when we first started talking about this, I, I was starting to get nervous and think, oh boy, this is not going well. But I, but I think the discussion has been really really helpful and beneficial. Um, I, Mr. Mr. Antone mentioned something that I, I just want to reiterate that there's not a lot of uh, vacant 20, 20 plus acre sites in the city of Troy that are left. Um, fortunately for North Troy, two of them are North Troy. One of them is the subject site we're talking about which is a gateway into North Troy as you're driving north on Crooks Road. The other is the Met Hotel site, which is a gateway to Troy as you're, as you're exiting uh, I-75 I and entering, entering that area. Um, this is an opportunity to have two really great gateway type developments, and it is an opportunity to be bold. Um, there were some comments earlier on about, about uh, massing and height and density, and you know I just want to remind everybody that, that we don't have single family residential neighborhoods next door that are gonna that are gonna be living next to these in the shot literally in the shadows of these. The nearest residential neighborhood from this is a quarter mile to the west, screened by large office buildings. This is not going to impact any single family residential neighborhoods directly. So it, it is a chance to be bold. It is a chance to create place and you create place through good design, through walkability, through mixed use. So all the things we're talking about tonight, this is a this is the opportunity to be a really, really um, exciting project, and, and I'm glad. Um, I'm glad, uh, Miss 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 Baracus for being open-minded and, and uh, 
coming around to the to the the, the density and the height. Um, I'm, I'm glad you were open minded, and I and I, I heard a lot a lot of kind of back and forth tonight that was really um, really made me feel good about where we're at. And one of the things, just to clarify, Mr. Antone mentioned that there was information on the residential component in the PD, PUD documents. That's the PUD agreement I talked about when I when I summarized the PUD process. That's something that the Planning Commission has not yet seen. But I think moving forward, the next time we saw these plans, if there was some type of phasing information that was on these concepts, I think that would be very, very helpful. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Absolutely. Go ahead, Mr. Rahman. Uh, just the last one from my side. Uh, uh, I know that when Mr. Savidan was talking about the PUD, uh, we, uh, you were mentioning environmental and economic uh, sustainability. So uh, I know it's probably way in the future, you don't have the details, but next time when I, uh, we see you, I'd like to see what kind of environmental sustainability you're gonna have in your building so that at least we know, feel good about this new project we're gonna have here. Just want to add that so that it's on the record. Okay. Anyone so, else? Yeah. Well, I'll just throw in my little quick thoughts. Um, number one, uh, there were two wonderful similar type situations and Mr. Savinat brought up with the old Met Hotel and then before the Met there was, uh, was it the Hilton? What was the, I uh, can't even remember what that hotel was before the Met came in place. But we had a developer come in with a, again, a, a boulevard plan um, and mixed use. Uh, and if we still have those plans, if Brent could forward those I think they were they were good concepts. Forward those to uh, Mr. Antone, and also the one at the Kmart site uh, that never got off the ground. But it, it again, it had a boulevard type thing with a very central community uh, activity area, fountains, winter activities, summer activities. It was it had almost that feel of a. Um, um, a, a Trying to think of uh, an example, I can't right off the top of my head right now, but it's it's that uh, a little city within a city, you know, it's um, that kind of uh, feeling. The 888 building couldn't quite achieve it. They didn't have the kind of acreage that you have to do it. But both the old Met and your property can do it because you have the acreage to create that little city within a city. And if we could anchor both of those on either side of crooks like that, I think it'd be just a dynamite uh, addition to the North Troy area. Um, Really, that's uh, about it. I, I I would like to see some uh, residential in there, but uh, I I know this. You know, I'm hardened against it normally because we see so many row housing as as that's the residential. That's not what I want, and it, <laughs> I don't want to see row housing in there. But it it would be again the higher end um, apartment buildings that were. Um, multi-story and not necessarily uh, uh but uh, like a high rise you know you we uh, i'm not opposed to eight ten stories uh at all uh, you can cre again creating that city um uh, in there and getting away from the i call like ticky tacky row housing things that we've been putting at major road intersections this is a major intersection crooks and, and long lake um that's anyway, that's my thoughts. Create something really elegant. And, and I know you've got your history says that you're the right mix, both developer and architect to do this. And you've you have examples all over the country and probably the world where you've created some just exceptional world renowned uh, communities, both mixed use and and others. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about what's going to happen there. It's uh, You've got the the right piece of dirt to work with, and uh, I'm just I'm just waiting for your next uh, presentation, uh, utilizing maybe some of our thoughts and uh, your your real experience. I mean, this was what you showed us was just a block diagram, um, but but I can't wait to see uh, the excitement you guys can generate uh, and turn that uh, piece of land into something totally exciting. So, any other comments? If not. I'm going to move on to our next uh, item, which is uh, correspondence from the ZBA. Thank you all very much for your time and, and, and input. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. We're happy to help. Okay.
So, oh, Mr. Rahman, you well, have a Actually, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if yep. I may. Sure. So, I'm going to ask, after this um, agenda was set, we received a lawsuit. So, I'm going to ask that we not have any discussion about this particular item. We can oh. introduce the topic, but I don't want there to be any discussion. I, I want the Planning Commission to be aware of the issue, but I think it's important that we not... Um, Provide a roadmap, I guess, with you will um, on, okay. on this lawsuit. Okay. So we all heard that. No comment, but we can certainly hear what was uh, agreed upon by the ZBA. Okay. So uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Savin, for uh, showing this uh, slide. Uh, that meeting was on uh, November seventeenth, uh, twenty twenty. Uh, there was a request to build a, uh, a deck, which is. Uh, within the three feet from the rear property line. Um, this is this home is in a cluster ho cluster option, you know, uh, uh, home or subdivision. Uh, you know, the requirement, setback requirement is 25 feet. The requester was trying to build a 20 by 20 or something like that deck but that she cannot do that because we in the zba considered as extreme variants and uh, we actually denied it but then if you look at the picture you see that there is uh, the rear exit of the uh, house is six feet from ground and uh then it's something to get up down to the patio level. So um, this is a situation where uh, there is no solution. And uh, the idea is uh, if we can discuss this in the planning commission and uh, get a solution for them for a smaller deck maybe. Yeah, we and, can't discuss the project. So right. just, just, uh, just please report on what, what happened at the ZBA. Okay. And uh, the, so ZBA, as a representative from Planning Commission, asked me to uh, take it to you and see if you can uh, uh, have a solution or just some change in the zoning ordinance, and then we can bring it back. So that's basically my responsibility is bringing this message to Planning Commission. Okay. So I, I think with that, I probably uh, have said enough. So if you have any other questions. No, you brought it to us and that you did your job and we're not going to comment on it. So thank right. you. I think, yep, yeah, Mr. Mr. Raman, I think it's valuable and I think it's important discussion to have. Just the timing is not appropriate right now, given the, the pending lawsuit. Oh, Mr. Duff, Ms. Dufferin, I, I, is that something that I'm not sure about my uh, overall position? Uh, should I need, do I need to say anything to ZBA or just a presentation is good enough? C uh, CD will take care of the rest of the, feedback because I am I supposed to give some feedback to the well it, it really depends what it really depends what what if there's any action to be taken but this time I think you can report back that exactly what I said you know there's a there's okay. a pending yeah. lawsuit and yeah so okay. got it thank you so thank much yeah okay we'll go on to our next item election of officers every January uh, we I have a an election of the the people to basically uh, lead this group. So um, right now I'd like to open up the floor for nominations for chairperson and uh, vice chair. Any uh, thoughts from our group? Mr. Mr. Chairman, this is this is Brent. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm just throwing it out there. I do not vote. It's your planning commission. And I'm just merely throwing out an idea. Given the fact that because of COVID, we, we essentially uh, we're not able to hold uh, basically half the meetings of a typical uh, planning commission uh, calendar year. Um, it, it may be something for the planning commission to consider of reappointing the same officers to give everyone a chance to, to have a full calendar year of meetings. I'm just throwing it out there for what it's worth. Sure. Um, because uh, just to be fair to, 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 the, to the officers, um, it's maybe something that you can consider. Okay. Comments, Mr. Faison. Sorry, took me a little while to get off of mute. I, I was actually, my thoughts were actually exactly what Brent said. I, I just with the limited number of meetings uh, this year, 
and I don't even think it was half what what, what we typically had. I, right. I thought it made sense to to go forward with the same officers as well. Okay. Any other comments, Mr. Tagle? I think it's a grand idea. Good suggestion. Anyone else? So, do we proceed by just uh, uh, electing the same people, or do we just say it's a continuation? I'd ask Mr. Dufresne for uh, the the proper procedure for that. Right. Well, your bylaws do require an election, so if you want to put forward a slate, that that's fine. Um, I guess the question is, and Brent, help me out here. Uh, the ZBA representative, that's a separate. Um, that's a separate election, correct? Right. Yeah. Correct. So, yeah, if you want to put forward, it has to be an election under the bylaws. So, if you want to put forward a slate of, you know, the current vice chair and chair, that would be sufficient. Okay. So, I, we need someone there to nominate. Uh, there doesn't have to be a second. It just, uh, it's just a, a nomination from anybody. So, I'll nominate you, Mr. Krentz and Mr. as chairman and Mr. Lambert as vice chair. Is that what you need? Yes, that's what I need. Any further uh, nominations? Hearing none, I uh, declare the nominations closed. So we'll have a vote. Uh, Ms. Sarnicki. Mr. Rahman? Yes. Mr. Rausch? Yes. Mr. Tagel? Yes. Mr. Faison? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Lampert? Yes. Ms. Malahali? Yes. Ms. Paracas? Yes. Motion, Motion carried carry. unanimously. Okay, next item is the representative to the ZBA. I asked Mr. Rahman, would you like to continue on that role in that role? I'm okay. Any <laughs> any 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 other people would like to have that job for this next year? Seeing none, I'll close the nominations for that. We need a this is just a recommendation. Council has to uh, approve Mr. Rahman's position again, but uh, but we'll uh, certainly put his name forward to city council. You need a vote for that, I take it, Mr. Dufresne? Yes. Okay. Roll call, please, Ms. Sarnicki. Mr. Rausch? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Mr. Faison? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Kren? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Ms. Malalahali? Yes. Ms. Caracas? Yes. Mr. Rahman. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Okay. Then the, the, the uh, last item is planning commission comment. So anyone want to bring forth their comments? Mr. Sabinet. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you indicated uh, before we started the meeting that um, you'd like the uh, the two new planning commissioners to have an opportunity to kind of introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about themselves. These are, these meetings are very awkward because we the, the way the agenda is formatted, we get right into business, and it's very awkward to, at the beginning of the meeting to have these conversations. So, um, so I, I want to introduce our two new, new planning commission members, uh, Jerry Rausch and uh, Lakshmi Mahalahali and uh, give them each an opportunity uh, to uh, just tell us a little about themselves. Okay, we'll start with uh, Ms. Mala Lala Holly. Thank you, Mr. Krent, and thank you, Mr. Savadant. Uh, hello to everybody. And uh, yes, I was, um, uh, I was seeing that many of us were struggling with the name. I'll try to make it easy, uh, and I will make sure that it appears on the screen hopefully soon. But uh, to say my name correctly, this is how you would. This is how I am usually called. It's Lakshmi, uh, and that's spelled as L-A-K-S-H-M-I. And the last name is slightly tricky. I understand it's Malala Hali. Um, I'm sure next two or three times uh, that we meet, I'm sure everybody will get it. Um, I'm going to keep it brief. A little about me. Um, I'm a very. Uh, I, it's been four years since I've lived in Troy. 
but I am a Michigander by heart. Um, we've been in Michigan for for a very very long time, and I uh, I was a uh, professor at community college, and I used to teach there the longest. So I have taught in many area community colleges, and currently I have moved to being an academic advisor, and that's what I do um, on a daily basis. And uh, I we have mm, we have just one uh, child in our family, my son Arjun. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, he is also on the Global Troy Community uh, on Global Global Troy uh, Council, and he's a senior at Troy High. And uh, my husband, uh, um, my husband, uh, who is uh, currently an engineer, a GM. So we are a family of three, and um, and I'm excited to serve in this role. There's a lot of learning that I need to do, and I'm sure with all your expert understanding and guidance, I will. Um, I will hopefully uh, understand the process better and help you all move the city into becoming the most sought-after city in Oakland County. Not that it's already not it, it's it's not already there, but we will uh, help get the city a lot more amenities and uh, gathering areas, which I am very very particular about. I love to see that happen all over Troy. So thank you for giving me this opportunity, um, and that's it. Great, great that you're great that you're a, a, a member of our commission. Thank you for uh, volunteering. Uh, Thank you. Yes, Mr. Rausch. Good evening. Um, I came from corporate real estate in terms of my background. Uh, I started out leasing and buying properties for a, a corporation that uh, owned a lot of trucking companies and eventually ended up running the subsidiary. We, uh, we operated mostly east of the Mississippi. And during my time there, I developed a mobile home park, an industrial park, a Walmart anchored shopping center, um, acquired 25 acres of houses in Detroit for a, a, a de development for GSA. Um, so I, I, I had a lot of a lot of experience on the the other side of the table from the planning commission, and then spent 20 years after that uh, as a part owner in a, a boutique a real estate brokerage firm. We dealt again and in, in strictly in transportation related properties on a national basis. So we had offices in Chicago and Kansas City and uh, Seattle. And, Detroit and Atlanta, and we, we covered uh, the U.S. I handled the northeast part of the U.S., and on that end, did a little bit of, of um, uh, work on development. Most of the properties that we dealt with were pre-existing, so, uh, so I've had some experience on the other side of the table, and then on the, the, um, the, the not-so-pro-development not so side of the table, I think you saw my face a few times when uh, Crooks Road townhomes came before you. Um, so it, I consider it an honor to be able to serve and uh, look forward to working with all of you. We're looking forward to seeing your face and hopefully sometime later this year, see you in, in person. So thanks for joining us. Thank with you. that, are there any other comments from the commission that uh, you'd like to express at this time? Oh, go ahead, Mr. Lambert. I, I just wanted to thank uh, Mr. Rahman for his willingness to serve on the ZBA again. I happened to tune into the past couple of meetings, and they went to well after 11 o'clock at night. So thank you very much for serving there. Thank you for mentioning that. Really appreciate it, Mr. Lambert. <laughs> Anyone else with a comment? Seeing none, then I will call this meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night.